five minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, whatever it takes, you do the small talk. But when I get into the plan, I'm always saying the same thing, okay? Look, what you're here to evaluate today is whether it makes sense to someday owning one of these virtual franchises or internet franchises, right? Right off the bat, I want to get people out of the mindset that they're getting into something. Did anybody get into Market America or did you actually purchase a franchise? You guys all purchased a virtual franchise. You actually own a franchise. The difference with this franchise compared to a Subway and McDonald's, and really the only difference, is this franchise is virtual. Okay, because how does a franchise work? Franchises, if you're gonna buy a Subway restaurant, you don't have to figure it all out. You have a proven plan that if you do everything, that you put the cooker where it's supposed to be, make the sandwich, that they've got it all figured out, all you gotta do is follow the Subway business plan. Exact same thing here. It's a 24 year old company. They've made over six and a half billion dollars, three and a half billion dollars been earned by the franchise owners. But you own a virtual franchise where the parent company, any possible way they can find a way to make money, the parent company puts the time, energy, and research into that. When they find those ways, they add those ways to your virtual franchise. Just like if you owned a McDonald's, is it your job to come up with the next Happy Meal toy? Or does McDonald's Corporation do that? Is it your job to figure out if you're gonna have fish sandwiches? Or does McDonald's Corporation figure that out, right? You get to work for profit. The corporation figures out the methods. Does that make sense? That's why it's a franchise. Our hardest thing is this virtual franchise is so inexpensive that people treat it that way. If you spent $500 on a McDonald's, I guarantee when the 18 year old calls you up at Sunday at six in the morning going, you know what, I ain't feeling it. I don't know if I'm coming in today. If you only invested $500, what are you doing? You know what? Why don't we open at 6 a.m. anyways? Yeah. Maybe we should start opening at 11 a.m. on Sundays. Isn't that what happens? You know why McDonald's franchise works? Because you spent a million dollars. So when the 18 year old calls you up and says, I ain't feeling it today, you get your butt out of bed and you go open the doors yourself because you spent a million dollars. So one of our biggest downfalls is this being virtual Okay, people treat it that way. So how does this work? So when I draw the plan out, so that's the theme. If I'm at a cocktail party, that's what I'm talking about. I own an internet franchise. The coolest thing, it's virtual, but it's just like any other franchise, but being virtual, we're in and out of all kinds of things. We're not stuck in any one demographic, but any way the market America, the parent company, can find ways to make money, they put the time, energy, and research of that. When they find those ways, they add that to my virtual franchise. That's how I talk, over and over and over. That's how I've talked for the last 10 years, okay, I'm like a broken record. So when we sit down, I'm just going to draw out exactly what I said. Look, like I said, Market America is the parent company, all right? And again, I might get in more details. It just depends on the person. I might say they've been 24 years in business. I might say they've made six and a half billion. I might say three and a half billion has been earned by franchise owners. I may not. Don't get too caught up in the details. It just depends on who I'm sitting with. And the concept you're looking at is you're looking at whether it makes sense to own one of these virtual franchises. So what was your name? Evan. Evan. Okay. So I, one of the first things that is different now versus the old days, we used to always put whose name in there? Evans. Not mine. Evans. The problem now with a flip chart and a PowerPoint and a video is their neighbor, their name's never there. Minute one, the minute their name is in there, are they more up to pay, te pay attention? 100%. Isn't that the silliest thing? We've lost that for seven years just because we haven't done that one thing, okay? So Evan, you're not trying to decide whether this is for you tonight, today. All you're trying to decide is whether it makes enough sense to sit down again and see it again and get more information. Is that fair? That's what I'm saying to him. You relax. Look, on a scale of one to 10, I'll ask you at the end here, if you're five or above, my job is to open up my calendar. And you know, if you're five or above, we're just gonna schedule times where you see this a bunch of times until you can make an educated decision of whether this is for you or not. If you're a one to four, thank you very much for your time. In fact, nine out of 10 people I sit with, this is not for. I just don't know who the one out of 10 is. 
That is a very relaxing comment. I've completely let him off the hook. The chance of being not on 10 is great, so that he's off the hook, now he can just relax and pay attention. Does that make sense? And the best example I can give, if I said, look, for every 10 people I showed, nine people end up registering, what do you think he's thinking? Oh man, he's after me, or oh, you know what? I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm not gonna convince him this is for him, I just want him to relax enough to receive the information. Does that make sense? Okay. So Evan, like I had said last you know, night at the cocktail party, the cool thing is you're looking at owning a virtual franchise and Market America is the parent company, but any way they can find a way to make money, they put the time, energy, and research into that. And when they find those ways, they just add those abilities to your virtual franchise. The cool thing is in no way do you have to use all those ways. In no way do you have to be an expert on all those ways. It just gives you more ways to make money, okay? Now, as they're doing that research, number one is they only look at existing billion dollar industries. We're not gonna try to invent something brand new, right? We're not gonna invent a brand new, you know, weightlifting machine, okay? We're gonna, if there's a billion dollar industry, we're just gonna see if we're gonna break into something where there's already billions of dollars being spent, okay? The other philosophy as they're looking for these ways is they'll only deal in consumable goods or services. And I'll tell you, this is the one I didn't really understand when I saw this 15 years ago. When Shannon showed me, I, I, you're just thinking, right? Because I gotta be honest, you know, consumable goods, you're talking about health and nutrition and skin care and green products and whatever. To me, that was not very sexy. Okay, I'm like, dude, where's the chainsaw? Right, I can talk to Justin about a chainsaw, right? Okay. You know, you start talking about some of the other ones that just may not feel. The difference is, if I'm selling chainsaws, how long is that chainsaw gonna last? 10, 15, 20 years? So that's what true sales is. I can't feed my family until I find a brand new person all the time that needs a chainsaw. Whereas once I finally got down what consumable goods means, is I can finally get a customer base and not everybody, but some of those customers then, with zero effort on my part, will keep coming back over and over and over because what I'm, what I'm carrying are consumable goods. And I'll give an example. How many, how many furniture stores and mattress stores and electronic stores have we seen go out of business in the Buffalo area? All the time, right? How many grocery stores have we seen go out of business? Not many. Not many. No, I'm just saying, I've got 20 years of talking about it. I've never heard of those. I'm just talking about, right? You know why grocery stores hardly go out of business? They're consumable goods. Once they get their customer base, people come back over and over and over. Man, I think when a furniture store opens these days, they automatically buy the going out of business sign comes with the actual business. Right? Yes or no? How many going out of business signs have you seen in front of a grocery store? It may not feel as sexy, a grocery store, but consumable goods is where big money is. The second thing is services. Services are just the concept that once you set somebody up, they're paying over and over and over. The gyms are amazing ideas, right? We all pay what we call our fat tax. I've been paying my fat tax for 20 years at World Gym. And it just means no matter what, right? Us, man. You get started, right? But every month you're paying that tax, that service. Okay, that's where big money comes in. If somebody just sold me a set of weights in my basement that sat there for 20 years, they made money on me one time. Okay, and they live and die by the next person they can sell a weight set to. Does that make sense? A gym that has a service is a beautiful business plan. Okay, so that's the philosophies they use when they look at these. So number one, they look at health and nutrition. I'll usually start with that. Do we agree, and I'll ask the person I'm sitting with, would you agree health and nutrition is a billion dollar industry? Okay, so what they're looking is once they recognize a billion dollar industry, are there any consumable goods that we can 
break into that industry. And that's obviously where I'll bring out isotonics. Because it's no good, if we just carried vitamins in the pill form, just like a centrum, would we really have a business plan or products that people are searching out? We have to have products that are different than what's out there. And then I'll take the time to talk about isotonics. Okay, I'm not gonna do it now, but then I'll bring it out, I'll let you taste it, I'll talk about you know the effectiveness or whatever. That's what I'll talk, because now I'm not just showing the business plan, I'm starting to prove it, okay? Would you agree that the web industry, as far as businesses having websites, is a billion dollar industry? And in fact, we're in a period now where there's a lot of businesses need, that need major upgrades, or there's still businesses that don't need websites. Do we agree with that, Evan? Okay, and that, you know, right? Do you agree it's a billion dollar industry? Well, the web industry is, if we sell a website, and I'll get into the detail, but once that company has a website, every month they're paying a monthly fee. So every time that company pays their fee, you continue to get paid. And you can compound that. That's where big money comes in. Do we agree that green products is a billion dollar industry? Do we agree baby products is a billion dollar industry? You know, automotive products, pet care, right? You know, Conquer Entertainment you know, financial resources. So I'll, depending on the person, right, is what I'm gonna talk about. If I'm talking about Evan, I probably am not putting bringing out makeup. I'm just saying, some people are forced to all these things. I don't talk about makeup, because that might be the instant thing that he hears that he's done. No matter what I do from here on out, I've lost him. Does that make sense? So just customize what you talk about. Guess what, Evan? Today I make tens of thousands of dollars a year on makeup and I know nothing about makeup. But I'm not gonna talk to Evan about that maybe in this example right now. Is that fair? So customize it. Questions or concerns on that? Ultimately, I always end on shop.com for flow. Market America recognized. Would we agree that online shopping is a billion dollar industry, yes or no? Okay, would you like a little piece of that? So Market America recognizing online shopping, a billion dollar industry for years, they tried to do it on their own, okay? When they finally thought, look, we're, we're falling behind, they really, you know, because they made $6 billion, they had the money to be able to do it. They spent tens of millions of dollars and bought the company, shop.com, and when they did that, they added that to our virtual franchises. So these are all different ways that they found ways to make money. And when they found those ways, they added those ways to our virtual franchises so we can make money on that. The cool thing about this being virtual is we're not about any one thing. What does online shopping have to do with health and nutrition? Nothing. What does you know green products have to do with selling websites? Nothing. What does you know automotive store have to do with you know conquer entertainment? Nothing. So all I'm trying to do is prove and talk about that theme of this being a virtual franchise. So that's the whole first part. Are there meetings where I stopped there? Yeah. If I was like, man, that's awesome, and it took an hour, and I got an hour of lunch break, you know, and that's all we've got. Hey, Evan, have I shown you enough? There's obviously more ways, and we got to show you how we make money. Okay. You know, would you like to see more? Have I shown enough where somebody would want to see more? Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't force the rest, okay? Then it might be the next time we sit down. I usually get further, but from here, I then pull out my laptop and I show you shop.com, okay? Now, 95% of the people that go to shop.com just click on the top, the tab that says stores. Do not get into comparison shopping and e-gift cards and all this other crazy stuff. I only show shop.com where we get paid cash back at stores that people are going to anyways. So Evan, would you agree that somebody somewhere is gonna go online tomorrow and type in sears.com and spend $200 at sears.com anyways? Is that a fair statement? Sure. Okay, right? And that's the point. I'm not getting into us versus Amazon. Mm -hmm. This is not the end all website. The minute you make this the end all website, it takes three seconds for somebody to show you it's not. This is an amazing website 
that should be part of your repertoire as you're doing online shopping. Does that make sense? So would you agree that somebody's gonna go to Kohl's.com and spend $200 anyways online tomorrow? It's a no-brainer statement, isn't it? If somebody says that's not gonna happen, I don't move on until somebody is reasonable with me of that statement or a statement similar. Is that a fair, right, you understand? Some of us force it and start moving on to a plan when this person is ridic you know, they're, they're the ridiculous in the way that I have no problem with a skeptic. I love skeptics. I, I, I can't deal with cynics. A cynical mean person means no matter what I say, no matter how logical, they refuse to agree with anything. And that's a cynical person. A skeptical person is, hey, I'm very skeptical about this. Prove it to me or show me. Does that make sense? So if you make a statement where you're saying, look, is it fair that someone's going to go online tomorrow and spend $200 at Sears.com, right? And they say, oh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> am I going to go forward? Okay. Or I'm going to try some other examples. And again, I have shop.com. I'm not doing it now, but I'm going to spend five, 10, 15, an hour, whatever it takes for them to see the value of shop.com. Well, the value is if somebody starts at our shop.com and your shop.com, it might be shop.com forward slash Evan, right? We get our own McDonald's that's specific to you. Once they register, it's free and whatever. When they click over, they still click over to Sears. They spend the $200 they're gonna spend anyways, but they just made $4 on your website for doing what they're gonna do anyways. That's our customer. I'm not trying to convince people they should shop online, right? I'm not trying to convince people they need to buy the computer through our website. The person that's gonna go to Kohl's.com anyways is our customer, that's a no-brainer. Because this cash back is on top of coupon codes and discount codes and reward points and all that other stuff. Does that make sense? I do not move on until they agree with that concept. Is anybody gonna get rich overnight on that? No, of course not. That's not what I'm trying to describe. I just want to get them on board with the fact that that's reasonable and that makes sense, right? So Evan, after now again, I've shown you shop.com. I don't necessarily get into raise.com unless they really get it. I don't get into coupon codes unless they really get it. I keep it nice and simple. But if somebody's very computer literate, I'm gonna keep going, okay, until I hit roadblocks where I'm losing them. Does that make sense? Okay, you start showing somebody that barely uses a computer, raise.com, and you gotta do this and this, you've lost them. Customize it to who you're talking to. So Evan, I've shown you Advanced Auto Parts and Home Depot and, you know, and Kohl's and Sears and Kmart and, you know, Hertz Rental Car and contact lenses and, you know, man, my daughter took her boating course last year. They're a partner store with us. Just taking her online partner, you know, boating course, you got paid cash back for. Can't get that from Amazon. Can you get your contacts from Amazon? Can you get your rental car from Amazon? And in fact, this shop buddy, if you do shop on Amazon and shop buddy sees a better price for that TV you're searching, shop buddy pops up and says, hey, it's cheaper on shop.com, just click here. So those are all the things that I do. I don't race through it. If it takes me an hour to do that, that's what I'm doing. If I'm gotta wait till we sit down again to finish that, that's what I do. I do not move on until they see that value because that proves the whole business concept, doesn't it? Okay, are we good with this? Yeah. And then I'm gonna go in it with Evan. So Evan, who do you know that shops at Home Depot? Uh, Bill. Is it Bill a real person? Yeah. Okay, so I want, so and again, this is a big, this is a big part of it. I want to take our time and I want real possibilities, okay? Neighbors, friends, college buddies, workout buddies, you know, uncles, aunts, you know, all that kind of stuff. Who do you know that shops at Home Depot? Uh, my friend Kyle. Okay. All right. And who do you know that works on their own car still? Does their own brakes, change their own oil? Yeah, right. I do. Okay, good. What were you there? Justin. Okay. And so I would, you know, obviously show them, you know, advanced auto parts in the coupon codes and 4% cash back. You know, I mean, if somebody walks into advanced auto parts and sees this later, they're going to be really upset. 
because we're typically saving people 20 to 30 percent or more yeah. on their purchase the raise cards are just really by starting high. here the raise cards are usually like 20 to 30 percent it's absolutely insane okay but it's you know and then those are the things i'm going to spend time on yeah. okay who does justin know that might work <laughs> on their own car anybody you know yeah okay and see how i'm going to the next level you get it? Okay. Who else do you know that might shop online? My mom. Okay. Macy's, right? You know, all these different partner stores. Who all shops online? Trey. Who? Trey. Trey? Okay. Who else? Justin. Okay. Who doesn't? Cousin? <laughs> well, that's the point. Right. Okay. But I want real names. Okay. Uh, any neighbors you've got relationships with? Melissa. Okay. Family members? Cousin, uncle? Dave. Okay. Um, who does mom know? Who's her Who's her best friend? Does she shop online? Tammy? Yeah. Okay. Who else does mom know? <laughs> uh, Candy. Okay. And that's about where I get. How much of that do we get with a flip chart? How do we get in a push and play? And again, it's not that you don't have the flip chart next to it, not that I don't reinforce all this with the video. Tell me that's not engaging, okay? Now the coolest thing, Evan, is number one, right? How do we make money? So on the right side, I always write. Evan, you just told me that you work on your own car. So just us meeting today, you're gonna make cash back for doing the things you're gonna do anyways. In fact, you're probably gonna eventually make substantial cash back. So thank you very much for your time. Hopefully you're gonna save money that today's meeting was valuable right off the bat. And I had already shown them advanced auto parts. So I showed them, hey, you, you make a $100 purchase, I probably have saved you 20 to $30, right? Is that a fair statement? Mm -hmm. Okay. The second way that's very exciting, Evan, is we make a half a percent cash back showing others shop.com. So all of these people, once we've shown them how to do, you know, use shop.com and register where it doesn't cost anything, you make a half a percent cash back on whatever shopping they do. So if Kyle spends $500 at Home Depot, that might have made Kyle 10 to $15 cash back, but you just made $2.50 for the shopping he did at Home Depot. And the greatest thing about this cash back, which no other company has, is it's not one time. Every time Kyle uses your shop.com website forever, you get a half a percent right off the bat on his shopping. And so far, <coughs> for our customers and for you, how much does that cost? Zero. So this is one of the ways I get to prove to you this virtual franchise concept. Okay, make sense so far? But where this gets big is, you got to get a piece of viral marketing, because we're talking... 25 cents here, 50 cents there, a dollar there. Nobody's getting rich overnight just on that concept. Where big money comes in is when people start leading to others. Does that make sense? So mom, right, she might have made 10, 15, 20, 100, $200 cash back, okay? When Candy is shopping and Tammy, do you think mom's apt to tell them about shop.com? Right, maybe? Okay, not everybody's going to, but the cool thing is we get to entice our customers to want, to want to tell others, because when your mom introduces Candy and Tammy to shop.com, your mom now makes a half a percent cash back on their shopping forever. So Tammy just spends $300 at Macy's between raise.com, coupon codes, or whatever, that $3, you might have saved Tammy $30 or $40, but now your mom just made $1.75 cash back on her shopping at Macy's. And not one time, but every time Tammy uses shop.com, your mom's going to get paid. Do you think your mom might be after want to tell others? And then Kyle, and he's using advanced auto parts, maybe he starts, and not everybody is, but there'll be some people that tell a couple. There'll some, be some people to tell 10, 20. There'll some, be some people posting this on social media. There'll be some people to, you know, telling 20, 30. It's not going to happen overnight, but is anything I've shown you not a fair statement? Okay? 
Now, if you don't tell anybody, does it go anywhere? Okay, so there's work involved, not just to put, you know, register and do nothing. You actually have to help implement this process. Okay, once again, this might be another stopping point. We ran out of time. What is my goal of the meeting? To get the follow-up meeting. If I've shown you that, and you don't want more information, you probably are not going to qualify for this. Right? Am I honest, right? Yeah. If I've shown you that, and that does not spur anything on where that makes sense, where you might want a piece of this crazy virtual internet world and the value of shop.com alone, okay, if they're really not willing to give you a follow-up point after that, that's okay. You know, I, I don't really push that because that's probably not somebody I'm going to get anywhere. Or I've planted the seed that they may come back later. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times that's a stop, you know, stopping point. Now, the third way that we make money is on those products that I showed you that are proprietary to Mark America, and I always have Awakes, Mokotonics, and Isotonics in my bag, okay? So I've always got things in my bag to physically show people when I'm going through this, okay? And I'm always showing them shop.com. Because it, you know, it's important to have things people can touch and feel, right? You got shop.com and a few products, and I could show them the Isotonics. Just a couple things, I'm not going, crazy with it. I might bring out the catalog, I may not. It just depends, okay? But the other way after that we make money is we make 20 to 30 percent retail profit on Market America proprietary items, meaning the things that are private labeled with Market America, the things you're not going to find at Walmart. So the neat thing is if any of these people want to buy those, not only do you make a half a percent cash back, but you make 20 to 30 percent retail profit. So if somebody spends a hundred dollars on, you know, an OPC and a multi, let's say, you're going to make 20 or 30 dollars retail profit. And to do that, you can become what's called a sales rep, and there is zero cost to do that. And this is where you can really start investigating this entire business model. I could care less about your money. I'm looking for people that are willing to put some sweat equity to get ahead in life. Okay, so we're going to go through this process to eventually see if this is a, there's a fit for you or not. All right, now there's two other ways that we make money, and that's called IBV and BV, and we call this either social currency or business volume. It just means that it's a point system associated. IBV is associated to all of our partner stores, and I usually have shop.com open, so I'm showing them the percent, right? So when I'm logged in as a distributor, it shows that Home Depot's 4% IBV, Macy's 4% IBV, you know, Advanced Auto Parts might be 6% IBV, right? I'm showing that. It's based on the profitability of that store for us. So BV and IBV really trucks, checks, you know, profit. BV is all these, all the Market America products, not the partner stores, but all proprietary Market America products carry BV points. And the nice thing with BV, it's very high, because obviously that's much more profitable to Market America because they're proprietary to Market America. But this is really where the big money comes in, and this comes in really through leverage. Now this is when you own a full franchise, which is about a $500 investment, okay? But once you've invested that, we start accumulating the BV and the IBV, okay, so that you can start getting paid really the big money. Now. You can sit like that for the rest of your life. There's nobody that says you need to expand your business, okay? You can do that as much as you want. You can make some good money on the side. You're probably not gonna get rich overnight by any means, okay? But you're not required to expand this next part. But if you want the next part, like any business, and now I'm gonna just do an example. Like any business, you need to expand to make big money, okay? And I'm gonna talk about things they can relate to, right? You're a personal trainer, but I'm assuming you have to show up to get paid, right? right? So you might still be self-employed, right? If we get paid at W-2, typically if you get paid at W-2, right? If you work for somebody, do you have to show up? So if you got to show up to get paid, there's pretty much always going to be a limit to what you can make. Is that a fair statement? Okay. 
So you can really figure out what your industry, what you're making, multiply it by how many hours and how many days and how many years you're gonna work, and that's really what you're gonna kind of make in your life. Is that a fair statement? A lot of people will go out and start their own business or become a chiropractor or start own, you know, doing something on the side or something that you know, they're not working for somebody else, they're working for themselves, okay? And yeah, you own your own business and you're self-employed, but if you have to show up to get paid, there's only so much you can make. My brother's a chiropractor in Virginia too, but guess what? He's gotta show up to get paid. Does that make sense? You know, we know people that, that cut hair for a living. Well, they still have to get show up to get paid. So the way to make big money, not only being self-employed, is to own your own business. And I don't care what you do, you have to have an expansion component, okay? If you cut hair and you wanna make big money, eventually you might open up a hair salon where there are other people doing hair or renting chairs from you, whether you show up that week or not, are you continuing to get paid? Okay, chiropractic usually will expand into having maybe another chiropractor in the office or a massage therapist and other services in their office. So whether they did adjustments this week, they still get paid, okay? But you must expand. And usually one office is not gonna make you millions. You might then have to open up another chiropractic office across town. You might have to open up another salon across town. Mike might have to open up another world gym across town. Do you agree with that? It's not just one. To make big money, you must expand. But when you get an expansion component, there's the possibility of making money that doesn't directly correspond to the hours in your day. That's where big money is produced. And the same thing happens here, but because this is virtual, there's virtually no risk. There's just sweat equity. And the way that we do this in this virtual franchise is if you want to make money on this part, each franchise owner has to help and develop two organizations of other franchise owners. Okay? Not eight, not 10, not 16, but you have to develop at least two other organizations of chiropractors, two other organizations of people that do hair, Two other organizations of people that you know have gyms, right? Of anything out there that you do, it's the same way. Usually, one of these people that starts that organization is somebody that's already either using the products, shop.com or services, somebody that really kind of comes out from this. And a lot of times, it's not your mom, it's not Candy, but Candy told her son, and her son told her other, you know, her, her other son, Tim. And every time Tim logs into shop.com, whose name does he see? He sees yours. So if he suddenly got 10, 20, 100, 200, 300 hours cash back, and he sees your name on shop.com every time, he knows there's more money, doesn't he? So who's gonna contact to learn how to maybe own one of these? So we find usually one of these people come from this. Does that make sense? So in this case, we'll say maybe that's Tammy. And we don't know. Okay, all we do is try to introduce this to everybody. And the cool thing about introducing everybody, for every 10 people I introduce the concept to, four to six are interested, but usually only one out of 10 does this fit for. If I own a hair salon, am I just gonna hire the first 10 people that say they cut hair? Or am I gonna go through a process to see if there's a fit? This is no different than any business out there that's expanding, would you agree with that? Okay. The other person is usually us really reaching out to interview through people to see if there's a fit. And it usually starts with, Evan, is there anybody in your life that's kind of entrepreneurish, meaning they've tried things, right? We've, got, we've all got the friends that are nine to fivers, they just need to be told what to do, give me my paycheck, I, I have perfect life like that, and I have no problem with that, okay? There's others in our lives that have tried things. They've tried the Tupperware, they've tried the Cutco, they've tried a business, they've tried this, on, you know, right? that kind of person. Is there anybody that sticks out that's kind of tried things beyond just the normal everyday job? I'm right here. Okay. <laughs> so give me a name that's not here. Um, Warren. Warren? Yeah. Okay. And it's funny how this almost always is somebody that's not here. It's the weirdest thing. Okay. I'm t it's crazy. You'll see that all the time. Okay. And again, we don't know if this is for Warren or not. We uh, eventually just reach out and introduce this, this to everybody until we find the people this fits for. 
And then what do you think we're going to do with Tammy and Warwick? We're going to teach them the same thing. And do you think Tammy's then going to have a bigger customer base on her shop.com website? And do you think Warren's going to have you know, more customers on his shop.com website? And those are going to lead to other customers and lead to other customers? Now, I always use the square as the franchise owner and circles as customers. That's just how I draw it, okay? And then eventually, is it fair to say that Tammy might want to expand and make the bigger money? Okay, and then eventually they expand, and I don't draw it exactly, right? Because it's never exactly. This person might lead to one, it leads to one, you might add a third partner before we have somebody that finds their two right away. Because that's really what it looks like. The other thing that I find is if you do this, people don't freak out about the pyramid concept as much. You flip the flip part, right? You all talk about how it's not a pyramid, and then we get to the page, whatever it is, and the first thing you see here is a perfectly shaped pyramid. Okay, the way I like about this, a lot of times you're not even thinking that. And because I've been talking about business expansion so much, most people aren't even worried about it. If they are, then I stop and I talk about it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, but imagine this. Imagine going out and teaching two other people how to become a chiropractor and be in their own practice. But not only that, eventually teaching them how to open up their own offices with or without you. And by doing that, now you get a piece of all of that expansion. In the real world, what happens? You bring on the new chiropractor, don't you? And you train them and teach them. And then eventually, what do they do? They open up their own office and become your competition. And who do they take with them? If you own a hair salon, what are you teaching all the time? People don't own, you know, to do hair, right? Mm -hmm. When they get really good, right, what do they end up doing? Don't bring their own. And I don't care what you do. Best friend, one of my best friends is a mason. In the last eight years, I've seen him train at least 10 other people to be masons. And now those couple of those people's ads are right next to his. Is that any different than any industry out there? The great thing with this concept is there is never a reason for this person to ever want to leave this business model. So when we train them and teach them, we want this person to make as much money as humanly possible and everybody benefits. That's one of the things that is unique to this concept. It's absolutely mind boggling. And these are the things that get you start getting you excited. This is where you gotta start pointing out how this is extremely different than anything else out there. And I use it in, you know, in examples. Look, World Gym. I'm sure there's some guys that have been great at World Gym, trainers or whatever, that have gone out and done what? Open their own gyms. Yep. Does that make sense? Is it Mike that owns World Gym? Am I getting that right, Mike? Isn't he Mark. the big owner? Mark. Oh, Mark. All right, okay. I've been paying Mark for years. Okay? <laughs> right? And then each one of these guys, you know, girls, whatever, create their own customer base. Can we see this happening? Does it happen overnight? And now I want to start getting into real examples. Tammy leads to Sue, leads to Tom, leads to Brad, leads to Karen, okay? Karen lives in Florida, right? These people lead to these people, lead to these people. Karen's father is Pat, his, you know, who's a customer. Pat shows his brother Melvin, okay, <coughs> shop.com. Melvin lives in California. Melvin spends $500 at Home Depot. Melvin made $10 cash back. Pat, who's just a customer, made a half a percent or $2.50. What this person makes as a franchise owner is this. And in this case, it's IBB, Internet BV, Internet Business Volume. And in this case, Home Depot is 4% or it created 20 IBV. Okay? So now this business gets 20 IBV. There is no other business in the world that does this. How much does this business get? 20 IBV. This business gets 20 IBV. They get 100% credit for the purchase of $500 at Home Depot in California. How much does this person get? How much does Sue get? How much does Tammy get? How much do you get? 
So somebody, this led to somebody, Melvin in California, who spent $500 at Home Depot. You have no clue it even took place, and you got 100% credit for that taking place. There is nowhere in the world that happens. This chiropractor led to this chiropractor, led to this chiropractor. When this person does an adjustment in Ohio, every single partner gets a, a paid for that adjustment, okay? This gym, taught this how to person how to open a gym, taught this person how to open a gym. When this person is doing training, not only do they get paid, every single gym that helped that person open gets 100% credit. No business model in the world does that. The only way that's possible, because you're asking how it's possible, is eventually this gym is capped out. The most you can ever make is $1,500 a week in BV checks and $1,500 a week in you know, IBV checks or a total of $3,000 a week. Would $3,000 a week work for you? Yeah. Is that going to happen overnight? No. It takes time to do that. But that's how everybody can share 100% in the points is because eventually the people at the top are capped out. So it's impossible for this to ever crash. It's all you know, mathematically you know, the way it works, but everybody shares in it. Okay? On top of that, when Evan has things going on in his business, let's say he sold $300 worth of product, he might have made $60 to $90 retail profit, but that created 200 BV or the points. If Evan brought this person in the business, he can download all 200 BV into this person's bank. How many did he get? 200. How much does this guy get? 200. How much? 200. No business in the world does that. Most businesses you get paid on what you've created to infinity under you, you also get paid on what's happened above you. That's unbelievable. And it's not a game we play, the company wants you to do that. It's not about if you're gonna get paid, just a matter of when you're gonna get paid. Okay, now I'm always doing this usually on a Lego piece of paper, so I leave this. Obviously I'm forced to erase it to go to the next part. Mm -hmm. I take a yeah, if people wanna take pictures or whatever. Same thing, but I'm showing the boxes. All right, so I'm just saying, look Evan, what really happens is you have a set of BB banks and IBB banks, okay? And it just means from this person, right, to infinity, any BB and IBB that's created go into these banks, right? That Home Depot purchase, that $20 purchase, went into your BB banks. The cool thing about BB is it doesn't go away at the end of the week or the month or the quarter. It stays in yours and everybody's banks for up to two years. BB, Market America products, because it's much higher, it doesn't need it. Whoa. Because it's much higher, trust me, in the old days we wore out lots of whiteboards. Because BB is so much higher, okay, it doesn't have to last more than a year because you're going to get paid on it. So it's not a matter of if you're going to get paid, just really a matter of when, if you're doing anything, okay. You could register in the business and guess what? Make nothing if you do nothing. Okay, this is the part that has to happen to start making the big money, but eventually you can hit what we call critical mass, which is about, I know it can be intimidating, but about 50 to 100 active partners per side. We call that critical mass, you know what that means? Try to stop it from continuing to grow. You can't stop it. You got five, 10, 20, eh, you're still the driving force. You get up to 50 to 100 partners per side, they don't really know who you are or care. They're making enough money that they want to do it with or without you. Do we want that? Yeah. We want these people to make as much money as humanly possible. Tell me an industry where that happens. In your dreams. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? So then what happens is Tammy, right, to Infinity and, um, who was there, Warren? Anything that happens to them to Infinity goes up to the, on your right side. Okay, and the way that we get paid is when the, every Friday at midnight the computer looks for at least 1,200 points from your left team and 1,200 points from your right team. It's not going to happen overnight, right? Somebody sells $100, they made $20 retail profit and only created 60 points, but everybody got 60 points in their banks. And then I'll give <clears> kind of a couple examples possible, right? And then I'm just showing when that happens, they get a $300 check. 
And then when it hits another 1200, or I'm sorry, yeah, 1200 per side, we're total of 2400, another $300 check. This might take four to six months for your first check. You're not quitting your job over the you're not gonna get rich overnight, but we're finding ways to just fit this into your current life. But is it fair once you have a couple of partners and a couple of customers, and especially with repeat customers, because it's consumable goods, is it fair to say that the points will start coming quicker? And so maybe the first time it takes four to six months, but the second $300 check takes you three to four months. And then just looking for another 1200 per side or a total of 3600 and at that point it might take two to three months and at the top it's 5,000 and 5,000 and when that happens you get a $600 check or maybe that only took one to two months and now maybe you're a year or more into the business at that point your banks go back to zero and the whole process starts over again so maybe it takes a year or two a year and a half to make your first $1,500 you're not getting rich overnight okay but this is not a consuming your life you just fit it in your life and next time, maybe it only takes eight months to make $1,500, but you're two years in. And then the next time it takes four months to make $1,500, and then two months to make $1,500, okay? And then maybe $1,500 every month, but now maybe you're three or four months or years in. But then you're gonna start making $1,500 every three weeks, and then $1,500 every other week, until ultimately you're capped out at $1,500 per week. But it's not just $1,500 per week, it's $1,500 a week in BV checks, and the exact same pay cycle in IBV, $1,500 in IBV checks. And that's where the $3,000 per week potential comes per franchise, okay? There's also a $600 bonus that comes in, I never go there, okay? Not until the third, fourth meeting. There's also re-entries. You know, if there's somebody that needs big money, I might get into re-entries, okay? But I rarely go there in the first couple meetings. Okay, that's the basic plan. Questions?